Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 424, featuring a game that many consider one of the finest narratives ever constructed for a computer role-playing game. And that is, of course, Mask of the Betrayer. Now, this is not a game, a standalone game. It's actually an expansion for Neverwinter Nights 2. I think uh, pretty much universally agreed that it's better than the official campaign. Uh, although some go so far as to say you should just skip the official campaign, go directly to Mask. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but I definitely think you should see this game. And I wanted to read a little bit uh, from the manual, which of course uh, <laughs> you, know, you might not look at if you uh, are of a certain younger demographic. But back in the day, this was a big part of the game. And they have an introduction that, as far as I know, is only printed in the manual. This is from Kevin Saunders, lead designer and producer. And so I thought it'd be fun to read this, where he kind of outlines his uh, the goals uh, for Mask of, the Betray uh, Mask of the Betrayer. And then as we play, we'll see, did he live up, uh, did the, does the game live up to these goals or not? Uh, anyway, uh, here goes something like this. Welcome to Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer. We began planning for Mask in the summer of 2006, as we were finishing up Neverwinter Nights 2. We established three primary goals for the game. First, we wanted to enhance the Neverwinter Nights franchise. We recognized the areas in which Neverwinter Nights 2 could be improved, and it was a priority of ours to bring the game to these greater heights of excellence. We concentrated on optimizing performance, polishing various aspects of gameplay, and raising the bar on the look of the environments and models. That was their first goal. Second. We wanted to create an extraordinary game in its own right. Yes, you do need to play Neverwinter Nights 2 to play Mask of the Betrayer. And yes, you bought the game, this game at the discounted price of an expansion pack. But make no mistake, the quality of the experience that awaits you is that of a full-priced game. The characters, the story, the degree of polish, it's all top-notch. Third, we wanted to give you give more to the community. More creatures, more tile sets, new tool set features. Neverwinter Nights 2 community continues to grow, and we aim to do everything we can to aid you in creating your own adventures. At the core, the D&D uh, &D game is about friendships, about sharing an experience with others. To create your own adventure, your own world, and to enjoy it with friends. That's what we want to empower you to do. Uh, so we hope you enjoy the adventures we've created for you. We look forward to creating more adventures and playing your creations in the months to come. Sincerely, Kevin. <laughs> Uh, so the part of this I think would be most relevant would be that second goal. Uh, so we'll, as we play this, we'll be asking, you know, did they, did they succeed in this? Is it of the quality of a full price game? The character's story degree of polish, does it compensate for those weaknesses in Neverwinter Nights 2? <laughs> uh, does it rise to the greater heights of excellence that they probably wanted to reach with the official campaign, but maybe never quite got there? And we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is... Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer. All right, folks, let's get into Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer. Uh, if you look for this game, see what people have said about it. Uh, the opinions tend to be really, really high. Uh, some people say it's, uh, well, just about everybody says it's better than the official campaign, uh, the original campaign when you get Neverwinter Nights 2. Uh, some people, though, go so far as to say it's just one of the best CRPGs, especially in terms of narrative and, and design, uh, out of anything. It's one of the best games. Everybody that's a CRPG fan should check it out. Uh, and I would agree with that. I think you're really, really going to like this. Uh, so that's kind of the range of the opinions. We'll get into what makes it so great. Uh, should you just, some people say you should just skip the OC or the official campaign and go straight to this. Uh, I disagree with that, but we'll get into it too. Uh, so we'll be asking, you know, does this address the problems that people had with the official campaign? Uh, is it really one of the best CRPGs? You know, we'll get into all of that. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the, the history of this. It came out in 2007. Some different dates here. Not sure what <laughs> how much we can trust Wikipedia when you get down to the really nitty-gritty uh, dates over here. Uh, but generally about a year after the first game. And it was uh, produced and designed by Kevin Saunders. And it was written by uh, George 
I just want to make sure I got his name Zietz. right. Zietz. Zietz. So it could be Zietz or Zietz. <laughs> There's a couple different uh, pronunciations of the guy's name. Uh, but anyway, one of those. So hopefully we got one of those right. And you can see a little a little bit about him there. He's working for In Exile. In Exile now. He did, uh, let's see, Torment, Tides of Numenera, Pillars of Eternity, of course, later on. Let's see if we can figure out what he was doing before he did this game. Uh, 2004, he was at Turbine, credited as a designer on Lord of the Rings Online and Dungeons and Dragons Online. 2006, became a designer at Obsidian. And it looks like he's, uh, this might have been his first big project for them. He was promoted to creative lead on the first Neverwinter Nights 2 expansion. So pretty good way to establish your reputation. And I guess now he's worked. <laughs> well, this is not too good. So he returned to Obsidian in 2009 to serve as creative lead on Dungeon Siege 3. And of course that game got widely panned, but looks like he's done some other good things. Uh, but maybe this might be his crowning achievement. We'll see. Uh, so I didn't see a lot of uh, other interesting background on this. Uh, I think we could just jump into the game. So let's go ahead and get into it. Close this down. Uh, okay, what I want to do is start a campaign, talk a little bit about whether you should create a new character just for this, or if you do want to skip the official campaign. Uh, but then later on, as usual, I want to go back, because what I did, I played through the official campaign and then used my same character uh, from Ask of the Betrayer. And don't believe, let me just say up front, <laughs> there's a lot of nonsense online about this. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what planet some of these people are from, frankly. Uh, I saw a lot of people say just uh, there's no connection at all between the official campaign and Mask of the Betrayer. Completely false. <laughs> You'll see there's maybe it's not, uh, you know, it's not like you can't follow Mask. You know, I sort of get what they're saying there, but I think it's worthwhile if you're serious, you know, play through the official campaign because there are some ties and some of the characters show back up. Uh, you know, maybe it's not critical that you do that, but I think you'll get more out of the game. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and start her up. We'll take a look at the starting campaign. Or the intro level. Because one of the things about this campaign that everybody likes, including me, is that there's there's really no waste. Uh, there's no filler. You know, the stuff that happens right at the beginning, it's all thematically related. It's, it's all, uh, you know, it all sort of carefully woven together. And so it's not the sort of thing you'd want to skip areas uh, or jump over stuff. Uh, you know, there's really no... It's a very tight narrative. Uh, so most of this will be the same from the uh, other video I did of just Neverwinter Nights 2. So again, don't want to... not going to spend a lot of time on it. it seemed like I created a plain touch... No, I created a Yanti Pureblood uh, for my last game. Uh, why don't we try a uh, plain touch this time? You know, not, not a race I'm very familiar with. Never played one of these. Let's see what their uh, stats are. So it looks like they take a hit to strength, dex, con. Wow, that's a lot of hits. Or they start off low, I should say. Uh, they do get a boost to int, intelligence, and wisdom, looks like. So kind of sensing maybe uh, maybe some type of wizard. Which would be... F you know, we can get into this because people have said... <laughs> people warned me. <laughs> you know, when I told them I was doing Mask of the Betrayer. Matt, whatever you do, don't play as a wizard because uh, you're going to hate it. It's going to be unbeatable as a wizard. Like, what are you talking about? And we'll get into why that might be. It'd certainly be more challenging because the wizard says you're really any spellcasting class, you have to rest to bring back your uh, your spells. Once you cast a spell, it's gone. That slot is used up until you uh, rest again. And uh, one of the mecha key mechanics in this expansion is to keep you from resting. Got this, uh, we'll get into the details of that, but just keep in mind, you won't be able to rest all the time like you were in the original campaign. I'm just going to call it the OC. <laughs> uh, so if you're kind of addicted like I was to that constant resting, uh, you're going to have some trouble. So really be thinking about that. Maybe a fighter might be better. Uh, just for that reason, they're not so dependent on resting. Looks like we've got some, uh, all kinds of options here for our plane touched. Let's see. Wow, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different sub-races. That's amazing. And you can see some of these. Uh, it's like they're bouncing around these stats. I'm not sure. They probably have some special abilities. 
Yeah, one of my friends in my tabletop game, she's a tiefling rogue. And she's having a really good time with that combination. Yeah, favorite clash, rogue. Tiefling is slightly more powerful and gain levels more slowly than other races. Well, that's a, that shit probably won't be a problem this time. Might actually be a good thing because I found that my character was leveling up <laughs> really quickly. I mean, I hit max level way before the... Or I hit level 30 way before the uh, the game was over. Uh, let's see what he's got here. Racial traits. So he's got... He gets a plus two to his dex, plus two to int. This will all be good for a thief. I don't like the negative two charisma. Because, uh, again, if you know this, this series, you know your main character is the one that basically does all the talking. So you don't want to take a penalty, but what the hell. Uh, dark vision. Tieflings can see in the dark up to 60 feet. Yeah, that might actually turn out to be a good thing because there are lots of mobs, lots of monsters in this that do uh, cast darkness all the time, make things, make you blind. I don't know if that would, seems like I, if I recall correctly though, dark vision doesn't really help you in those situations against magical darkness, so I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see how they implemented that. Uh, infernal resistance, cold, fire, and electric, electricity resistance. Well, that's always good. I like any kind of resistance. I'm always looking for anything that gives me resistance to willpower or poison. Now, this is my least favorite. Anything that dazes you, stuns you, paralyzes you. It's a, a lot of times that'll make the difference. You'll lose a combat, lose a battle just because of that. And that was even a trouble for my epic character. I mean, this guy was just mowing down anything. He was like freaking Conan the Barbarian. I mean, just you wouldn't believe the damage this guy was doing. But he was always getting stunned and paralyzed. Or he'd just get dazed, boom, and now he's out for like six or seven rounds. And eventually somebody's able to kill him before he gets to move. <laughs> Very frustrating, I can assure you. Uh, so let's say he's got darkness as a sorcerer of equal level, kind of like my T. Skill affinities plus two racial bonus to bluff and hide. Uh, I guess that might be all right. I don't really do a lot of hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like stealth characters. I probably shouldn't be playing a rogue, but you know, hey, you gotta you gotta branch out a little bit, try new stuff, right? Who knows? Maybe I'd really really like to sneak stealth. Okay, favorite class rogue. Again, you know, with this multi-classing, you really want to think about that with your character, because you're the only one that can multi-class. See, so tiefling slightly more powerful. All right, so let's go ahead and go with the tiefling. Got some horns. Does he have a tail? I thought they had... <laughs> I don't see a tail. I thought they had tails. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I'm not going to really mess around with this. He's a pretty good-looking guy, right? Yeah. Hmm. The all-important class de uh, decision. Not, not really. Uh, remember, with this game, you can take a level of this, a level of that as you go along, but of course there's some of the coolest classes are called prestige classes and they won't be available. It says here they're not available, character creation must be unlocked by the special requirements. And so what you can do is if you really want to do something different, you know, maybe you got like Harper Agent. You're like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, so you can read about this here. If you scroll down though to requirements, and this one got me, I forget what class it was with my other character. But I didn't realize he was lawful, and the, one of the requirements was he had to be, you couldn't be lawful. So that, you could be good or evil, you just couldn't be lawful, <laughs> good or evil. So you locked out, can't change it. And so that's kind of a, you definitely want to be thinking, you know, in the future, where, where, where do you want this guy to end up? So you see there, you pick the evil class, you're screwed. And you think, well, I never play an evil character anyway, but... You know, some people, some of those comments I said, said this is, this Mask of the Betrayer is one of the few CRPGs where you can really play an evil character and it's done well. Uh, really, you know, accommodates that play style well. I don't care, I'm never going to play an evil character. <laughs> it's not, not for me. Uh, but, if you do want to play an evil character, you know, your mileage may uh, vary on that. So, see, Diplomacy, 8 ranks... Then you can see, well, lore would probably come pretty naturally. You'd want diplomacy, survival. Those are the feats I would need to get. You need at least one level of a spellcasting class. 
I wonder if that includes uh, bards. Let's see, class skills, praising. Uh, let's go down to where he gets the good stuff. Let's see, he's get some stuff at second level. Every level after that, the Harper Agent progresses in a selected spell casting class. When the player first chooses the prestige class, if they have multiple spell casting classes, they choose which one they advance in. Well, that sounds pretty neat. So this guy's kind of kind of sounds like a bard's like a bard slash mage. If I'm reading that right. The field agents of the Harper organization gathering intelligence, eliminating threats. Yeah, bards are the most common candidates. They are by no means the only qualified characters. Rogues, sorcerers, blah blah blah. Possess the diversity of skills and ability necessary to become Harper. So this might be something you'd work towards, right? Start off as a rogue, take a level of something, some spell casting class, and then uh, end up. Or you could start off as a bard. So I'm not, you know, that's just an example of what I'm talking about. So you spend some time here, look through the options, see where you want to end up. Uh, I went swashbuckler last time. I think I'm just going to stick to rogue on this. I always like playing a rogue. And let's see, awful good rogue. It doesn't sound quite right to me. <laughs> How could you be a rogue if you're lawful good? Uh, it could be uh, maybe chaotic good might work. I'm never quite sure what how this neutral stuff works. So let's see. Does the best that a good person can do. Devoted to helping others. He works with kings and magistrates but does not feel beholden to them. A cleric who helps others according to their needs is neutral good. Neutral good means doing what is good without bias toward or against order. I don't know. It just sounds so wishy-washy to me. Oh. Chaotic good combines a good heart with a free spirit. That sounds more like what I have in mind for this guy. Oh, here we go with our deity selection again. And You know, it's, it's not occurred to me. You know, first, my other character I think was maybe Tyr. I don't remember. But the de deities actually play a big role in this expansion, so I don't know, maybe they, this might be a more important choice than it was last time. Like LaRue is uh, one of the places you go, you go to like the, the wells of LaRue. What the heck is Mask? Master Ball Thieves, Lord of Shadows, Miliki. Let's see, I'm looking for, what's the god of death? Kalimbor. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I won't tell you why right now, but let's just pick this and see what happens. Okay, and then we can... You can distribute these points if you want. Let's just do the recommended options. Generally pretty pretty sane. Uh, again, though, you might want to bump up Charisma and Wisdom just because there are so many of those effects. You might like the saving throws. The will saving throws better. I wonder which one is specific to stun, because that's I hate that one. <laughs> uh, so reflex saving throws is what dexterity gives you. Fireballs. And fortitude resist poison. So it must be must be wisdom, right? Yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing wisdom is what would keep you from getting stunned all the time. Not 100% sure on that, but you guys can chime in. Well, I'm just going to go with the recommended for now. Uh, here we are back to this again. I don't know if these have changed. It's probably all just the same. You know, this guy's a rogue, right? He's He probably uh, likes to tell tales. Troublemaker. Uh, troublemaker. Boredom or malice leads you to play a variety of tricks on people and consequently get into trouble. Curiosity always got the best of you. Mm, kind of sounds appropriate. I wanted to go with the troublemaker. Sounds, that sounds like fun. All right, then we have our uh, customizing packages. Again, why would I don't know why this is even here. I think it's more fun to select your own, uh, your own uh, points, your own skills and feats. Of course, I just went recommended on this. But let's take a look and see what they did did here. Now, I don't usually... Yeah, these are good. Tumble's really, really good. Uh, sleight of hand, this would be pick pocketing. 
I don't know how well. I haven't really pickpocketed in these, this game. You know, we could try it out. It might be... Might work out okay. Set trap. Again, not something I ever really mess with. But, you know, again, we're, we're trying something new. Why not? <laughs> I noticed they didn't put any points into parry. Uh, listen, or it's a character to hidden creatures that may be nearby. And see, here's one that I would think, eh. It's not that big a deal. I'd probably cut some of those points and put them into something. Let's see if we can maybe cut out listen. Of course, this might be a prereq to something else. I never tried making my own traps. That might be kind of interesting to play with. Uh, appraisal, not so useful. Bluff. You know, might be more useful than you think, because there are lots of spots where you might be able to bluff and get some extra treasure or get out of a combat. I'll just do the craft trap. I'm kind of seeing this guy more now as, like, he's laying traps. Trying to lure the enemies into them. It's going to be, might be kind of fun to experiment with that. Uh, so there's a, you know, right off the bat, it's a question, right? Blind fight. So we know what this does from last time. It says he fights well even if blinded or against invisible creatures. So I wonder how this, does this, how does this impact the other thing he's got is his racial feature? I don't know. It's generally a good idea to see what they recommend and then see if you want to subtract something. So they recommend the dodge. I think these are default. Uh, let's see, what do they give him? Just the dodge? I guess he probably gets a, he only gets the one, one feet. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to uh, didn't mean to go back that far. Yeah, I guess he only gets uh, one feet. Wow. So I might be tempted to take improved initiative instead. Ah, we'll go with the dodge. I have to trust the developer a little bit, right? Okay, here we go again. We'll call this guy Mattius. <laughs> Bertunis. Age 42. Not much is known about your history. You are a closed book to even those who live in your village. So I guess we can edit the story. You know, some people probably would take the time to write out a, <laughs> a lengthy, how clear. You could say, Mattias appeared suddenly on this plane after a lengthy and successful career as a YouTubing goober. <laughs> there you can pick a voice. To your weapons and don't let up. Att attack! What was this? Uh, to the fight, my time. friends. Attack! You know, I said he was a troublemaker, so maybe this prankster might be the one. Attack! Once more into the breach, my friends. Stand still so I can hit you! <laughs> That's working for me. I like this. Okay, and now we are in. Greetings and well met. Let's see. Your character must be level 18 or the equivalent if you are a more powerful race with an effective character level adjustment. Before you may exit the lobby, how do you wish to proceed? Level up manually or level up automatically using my selected character package. Hmm. Well, since I didn't pick the package, I guess I'll have to do it manually. Yeah, so this will take a while. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, necessarily sit here and do all this. Uh, well, second thought. <laughs> Let's see. Where do I want this guy to end up? So this is eight ranks of bluff, faint, two weapon fighting, weapon focus. This looking here at invisible blade. I think I might be able to uh, to get this. So let's see what we're looking for. I'll just write this down. We need eight bluff ranks, and then faint, two weapon fighting. 
and then weapon focus and dagger or ku kukri. I wonder, can you use a kukri right out kukri right out of the box, or is that going to have to require proficiency? Anyway, let's see what we can do. See if we can get him there. Let's do another level of uh, rogue. Go ahead and bump the bluff up all the way we can. So we can't do it with this level. Okay, that's... Well, this is... <laughs> it's got a lot of levels to go. <laughs> Let's try another level of Rogue. Now we can probably get... Nope. So it's going to take quite a few levels before we can get this bluff up to eight. Uh, here's his next... Um, next feat. Let's see if we can get the weapon focus. I don't see Kukri here. I'm pretty sure that's a martial weapon. Yeah, so we'd have to get this... Yeah, Kukri's listed here. So we'd have to get Weapon Proficiency Marshal in order to use a Kukri. Hope I'm saying that right. I don't like Kukri, so we're going to go Kukri. <laughs> you know what? We're just having fun here, right? Let's just say, God dog it, he wants a Kukri. So we'll take that feat. Level him up again. I guess we could do a level of uh, Fighter if we wanted to, but I'm just going to stick to my Rogue. Yeah, they recommend... Uh, Adding to decks, probably sensible. Still not up there to eight yet with our bluff. Nope, nope, didn't mean to, to do that. Where did I put the points? There we go. Now we're level eight. Now we just have to get these feats. Let's see, rogue again. Okay, here we go. Faints. I don't even see faint listed on here. I must have to get something else before I can get faint. I wonder what it is. Combat expertise, I guess. Required for faint. Okay. <laughs> this will be <laughs> this will be challenging. I hope I can get all everything we need. But I got a lot of levels to play with, so. Okay, another Not sure how often these guys get feats. Not very many. Okay, here's another one. Let's see. Now we can get faint. I've never really used this before. It can be used to deny your opponent their dex bonus. In order for it to succeed, you must make a bluff check with a target DC of the target's base attack bonus plus their spot scope. Blah, blah, blah. Especially useful for rogues who could sneak attack with it. Alright, so maybe that's a good thing to have. I notice it used bluff. So I guess it's kind of nice I've been putting uh, points into bluff. Maybe I'll keep that up. Make sure that's all the way up. Okay, get another feat already. So we had fate. Now we need two weapon fighting. Where is... There we go. Two weapon fighting. Check these off as we go along here. And then we've only got to get... One, one more feet, and then we'll be good. Get another ability score. Yeah, I'm tempted to put a few points into strength just so he won't be whining about his, how heavy his load is all the time. And there we go. This should be it. So we need weapon focus in Kukri. Kukri. All right. Now we should be able to pick the invisible blade. There we go. So now we can start taking points in this. So they get a D6, space attack bonus high, high saves, reflex. Invisible blades gain no weapon proficiencies. No armor proficiencies. So they must have something cool they could do. Let's see, at first level, when an invisible blade hits with a successful sneak attack, inflicts a, he inflicts a bleeding wound that deals two points of damage per round for three rounds. The damage stacks with previous damage caused by a bleeding wound attack. He must be either unarmed or wielding only light weapons in order to inflict a bleeding wound. Blah, 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 blah. 
Unfettered defense. An invisible blade benefits from an increased survival instinct because of the sixth sense. He adds one point of his intelligence bonus, if any, per invisible blade level to his armor class. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So we want this guy to have some intelligence as well as uh, dexterity. At fifth level, an invisible blade armed with a light weapon becomes so sure of his ability to mislead opponents that he cannot roll less than five on his bluff check when using the faint feat. So I guess that's it. He gets everything by level five. So the question will be, do I want to keep putting uh, more levels into it after that? Uh, we'll see. See how far we can get with this. So that was one level. A little easier now. <laughs> Make sure it's invisible blade. Yep, yep, yep. Next. He gets bleeding wound too as a feat. Let's see what else we can do for him. Uh, weapon focus short sword. See, that would make about zero sense. Uh, these power criticals, you know, I was reading some stuff about these and the improved criticals. Apparently there's some conflict with this. You can get this ability called Keen Edge, an enchantment, and apparently this doesn't stack with that. So it's kind of a, some people say, if I'm reading that right, they say it's a wasted feat to worry about the criticals. Uh, I don't know. I'm, an, I'm not such a min-maxer that I'm like carefully studying that. Enough to be able to be definitive. Looks like there's one here called Improved Two-Weapon Fighting. The character with this feat is able to get a second offhand attack. So since I know I'm going to be using the two weapons, I, I don't see why that wouldn't be a good, a good thing to get. Second offhand attack at a penalty of negative five. Oh, that sounds like a good choice. So I'm up to level three. Let's get it to level five and then see what, you know, see what we want to do after that. Uh, this is what four. You notice I didn't put my skill points in there, but it kept them for me. Okay, now I'm at the five. So. Yep, and we're done with our leveling. So there we go. This guy's an invisible blade rogue with no gear all right so moving on then let's see so we could put our little pouch in there but let's go ahead and see what's around this corner and i'll go ahead and stealthy in why not <laughs> oh that's liable to leave a scar uh. Nope, he's completely immune, so that's just totally useless. But, you know, I'm sure there'll be other creatures in the game who will be able to, hopefully, be able to use my ability. Alright, there we go. Got the more volatile essences. Got a trap here. We can try to recover this one, too. I definitely want to level up again so I can pump some, put some more points into my uh, traps. Let's see, what do we have here? To Emiskari Library. Well, you wanna... Let's go to the library. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> These ruins are no doubt Emiskari in origin. This hill was a city in eons past. Well, I'll tell you what, this city has definitely let their public library go to seed. Look at this place. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the other day how uh, how libraries are kind of like strip clubs. You can go there and check out whatever you like, but they get really pissed off if you bring your own beer, you know. <laughs> All right, looted uh, extract water elemental spell. Take a look at that. So it says a druid... And if level 6 can use it, and a wizard of level 6 can use it. Wow, this does 1d6 points of damage per cast level, maximum of 20d6. Or half. If the targeted creature is slain by this spell, the extracted moisture is transformed into a water elemental of a size equal to the slain creature. 
Wow, this is pretty cool. So it damages it, maybe, and if it kills it, then you get a, a basically a summon spell out of it. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, she added it to her spell book. Now, if I want to use it, though, I have to remember to come back in here and let her memorize it. So that's a level six spell. I wonder why she's got these stone to flesh spells. Restores the petrified creature to its normal state. Yeah, I, I went through the whole expansion. I'd never used that spell. I don't know if, if there's some... Maybe some, sometimes they'll hide statues in places and you can cast this and figure out... Oh, it was actually a petrified creature. I don't know. I'll get rid of them, though. I, I don't remember ever using it. Stone body. <laughs> I'm so stoned, man. 50% uh, arcane failure chance and negative 8 armor check penalty. Well, so I guess that's kind of one of these emergency. If you're like out of spells and just... I'm going to get rid of all that crap. And let's try out this extract water elemental. Go ahead and give her... She's a trans... Yeah, that is transmutation. I'm sorry about the stupid uh, windows crap. Uh, the, um, this is transmutation, so it should be even better, since she's specialized in that. Go away, damn it. Man, I don't know what it is with these, uh, why anybody thinks it's a good idea to wart the fire out of a user. Okay, got that. Let's go ahead and rest up again. Oh, there's enemies nearby. <laughs> I really want to try this out. <laughs> Let's see, is that all the spells? Yeah, I think so. Yes, yes, yes! Must be some other enemies around here somewhere. Notice too, I'm still uh, running. Let's see, doesn't wanna. Whoa! What have I got in here? Helmed Horror. An empty suit of armor. I might have been able to sneak up on him. I wonder if I could still stealth. Probably not. No, it looks like it didn't let me stealth. Cool. Ha! They get a sneak attack? <laughs> Immune to sneak attack, I swear to God. Ha! So what I need to have, I guess, is a fighter join me or somebody else that can melee. And I think I can get some uh, attacks that way, right? And hey, this guy's gonna die. I don't. He's just not a front row kind of guy. I guess I could try to take this heal. Come on. All right. Let's try the meteor swarm again. Let's try the location this time. Let's try this out. She's trying to cast that spider skin on him. Now the meteor swarm. Come on, cast! <laughs> there we go. Boom! Really cool effects on that. Boom! That does a lot of damage. Took took one of them out completely. Got the other one. And she's casting. Looks like a like a magic missile for no reason. So I mean, yeah, even this uh, opening gambit here is already pretty challenging. I'm sure that's partly because of the character I'm trying to play, but... Wait, is there one of these guys still alive? What's going on? Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> There's another one. There are two more. It's probably not helping that I don't have the right kind of weapon. I need those kukris. Come on. The Helmed Horror. That's the most distinguishing feature of this guy, is that he has a helmet on! <laughs> immune to crit! Immune to sneak! I have to agree, that's, that's a bit much. Immune... You know, resistant maybe, a little bit less damage from it maybe. Completely immune. Yikes. Got some more spells there, so... You know what I generally do is just give her all the spells and... Yes. You can see if it's red, she can't cast it for whatever reason. Maybe I'll find my cleric later, give it to her. Got a new spell there. 
Two new spells. Power word, petrify. That sounds like something a transmutator would find useful. Looks like she's got some extra slots somehow. Ooh, stone skin extend spell. The extend spell doesn't work. I think that just doubles the amount of time. Like, stone skin's an hour long, so that's like two hours. Not bad. But... I think I like the cloud kill a little bit better. Another level six. We could empower the spell. It just, I think, makes it do more damage. Uh, yeah, let's try this uh, Ice Storm. Empowered. Let's see, where was that new one I got? The power word Petrify. Well, that's Divination. Huh. So I guess it doesn't literally turn him to stone. I got a level one spell. Let's try. I never did find that low light vision useful or identify. And I think this just increases movement speed. Probably don't want that. A large person, <laughs> get rid of that too. Let's see, magic missile is always a good one. And burning hands can come in handy. <laughs> Didn't even mean to make that pun. But got up another magic missile. Then we can, let's see, she doesn't have Cat's Grace. She's got a bunch of bears endurance. I think this horn. You know, let's just do the acid splash and powered. That ought to be pretty good. Acid and fire are generally pretty safe choices. Yes. <laughs> I think is that all there is to do in here in this library? Some books. Let's see. I think that's all. Nope. Some more scrolls. Another one of these vasculates. Cacophonic burst. Yes. Whatever that is is now in my spell book. This way, come on, slow. Cacophonic burst, baby. Seems like there should be something else to do in here, but oh well. Alright. Let's see. We explored everything, gone everywhere. I think it's time to try the pouch. Man, look at that. That haste spell is worth its weight in gold. Place the sacred pouch into the bowl and ignite it. As the pungent smoke fills the cave, the barrier sealing the tunnel crumbles away. The passage is now clear. Shall we go? What's up here? What is that? Tether, Teldor, Wolverine. I'm guessing they don't. Can't sneak up on them either. It'll be... I wonder if Rangers, or maybe there's some abilities you can get where it would give you more info, like whether they're immune to sneak attack. Yeah, let's just charge it. <laughs> 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 I'm almost tempted. Maybe I should make Sophia a melee just for now and give her that quarter staff. Hi, guys. You're not dodging very well. Any spirits. Well, sometimes I don't know if they're going invisible or what. They, they do something some monsters do and you can't target them. You just have to wait for the effect to wear off. I guess it must be invisibility. Or some kind of temporary immunity spell. Alright, come on. It's got a little bit of health left. Okay, go away, Wolverine. Get some more of those essences. Okay, now we're on to the... Upper barrel. Ha! 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 
So look, I'm pretty close to level. I want to play this until I get to the bear here. And I think that'll be enough for this intro. And I'll show you some of the later game. If I can sur get, if I can survive that long, jeez. I wonder why. I guess these things are partially concealed. Yeah. So it's, they got a 50% concealed. If you look at this target, concealed 50%. 13 plus 18, 31. Yeah. So it's making it hard to hit them. What does she cast on me anyway? It looks like stone skin. I didn't really found the computer uh, to be pretty good about the spells they select. It wasn't too much where you're like, why in the heck did she cast that? Just kind of leave them alone, let them do what they want to do. Didn't really interact, had to stop too many times and issue orders, unless it's a really tough battle. Okay, I guess that's good. Looks like I can go left here. Obviously, this is kind of the big room. Man, I wish I could find a damn kukri. Must be some items or something around here, right? Let's just creep along. That's another set of wolverines. Stand still so I can hit you. <laughs> Stand still so I can hit you. Oh my god, this is a, That's a lot of mobs in here. This is not looking good. I don't even know if this cloud kills effect on them. Let's see. Yeah, I thought that was a ranged weapon. I mean a cone. Uh, what to do, what to do. We could try to cast this cloud kill and see if it hurts him at all. And see, I can't tell if that is actually damaging them. Gadzoots? <laughs> I can see the gas, but. Oh, they killed Kaji already. Yeah, this is probably going to get me killed. This is bad. Let's see, take his healing push. Uh oh, does he not have any more heals? <laughs> this is this is definitely bad. I think this is a lost cause. See my fighter has great cleave, so you can take on a big group like this, but she unfortunately. I have just the spell. Yeah. Don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think there's any way I can run out of here either. I can't heal. I can try to equip her with that quarter staff. It's probably too little too late. When I'm scared to death. Come on. <laughs> I don't think she's got a chance. I don't know, I don't want to count her out yet, but considering she hasn't landed the single blow on this thing. Miss, miss, miss. Yeah. Oh, she got him. If I had something I could summon, maybe. Hmm. Is there anything I can do here? I think he's got any items that are going to help either. What's this? I'm not sure what greater heroism does. We can have her quaff it and see if it helps. She took it. Let's see if that helps. Well, she's got some damage absorption. I guess that's why she's not dead yet. Target concealed. 
There must be some spell she can cast that would give the take away this big advantage you're getting with being concealed. Oh man, she just cannot hit worth a damn. I'm gonna have to look into these spells again. Greater magic weapon, what does that do? Touched weapon plus one enhancement bonus per four caster levels, maximum plus five. I guess we can try that. Maybe this horn. You cast a deep resonant vibration that shakes all creatures, knocks them off their feet if they fell on the post. Uh, strength check. Well, let's try that. Let's get that way. No, I don't think it. Let's just see if we can run away. <laughs> Looks like they're just right after me. Go this way. Ah, oh, we're. Is this guy? Yes, yes, yes. What's he doing alive again? <laughs> okay, I don't know how that happened. He's dead. Wow, yeah, this. I am not liking this character. I think it's just. I hate to say it, but I think it is kind of a lost cause. You know, I did see a lot of people complaining about the. Uh, these creatures, all these creatures being immune to critical hits and uh, sneak attack. I mean, you're seeing it. It's just basically making it unplayable with this rogue. Uh, I hate to give up. You know, let's uh, try to go in a little better prepared. You know, I at least want to make it through this opening bit before we move on. So when I get to that, let's go back in there and see if I can do a little bit better. They definitely don't make it easy. Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's get, have her meleeing from the. Go ahead and let her melee. Can't see how that works. It's because her AC is. No, oh, she's got a. It's even worse than mine. So. <laughs> I don't know. Let's always just try it out and see if that helps. One more. Might want to see what kind of enchantments we could use. Let's see, what is her? Yeah, so I, I think I'm better off with the dex. She's better off with that crossbow because she's never going to hit with that little bit of strength on a, on a strength weapon. So keep that as is. Yes, yes, yes. Get these volatile earths. Okay, now the big fight is up in this room, right? So let's just see. I can rest here. Okay, you've been ambushed by enemies. <laughs> oh, this just gets better and better. He's so close to the next level. I wonder if I might get something cool next time that would really help. Now these wolves aren't too bad. Try fainting some more. See if they get faint. Make him faint. Or faint. Faint failed. Probably just aren't the right type of creatures. All right, so let's see. Can I rest now? And save again. Always use the XP. There we go. Okay, we're fully rested. There's a little more volatile air essence. You know, I might have enough of this to do some cool stuff. Let's see. So if there's eight of them, she can use her, her alembic to be uh, on pause. So you see that bumps it up to the next tier. So what was it? It's volatile before, an ounce of brilliant. She got 17 of those. You know, like this too, you don't have to keep clicking it over and over. Just, you know, one big batch, boom, you're done. So let's see, corrosive weapons. But I don't, I don't want to waste all my crafting stuff because I want to get kukris as soon as possible on my main. 
And you can only have up to three uh, special properties or enchantments. And again, there's some weird stuff with like uh, some sometimes you can anyway. I don't quite get all the uh, minutia of that. Uh, let's see, enhancement bonus on a weapon, AC bonus on armor. That's with the power, the fire. Volatile power. I think it has to be at least brilliant before you can get anything. Weapon vampiric regeneration. That sounds pretty cool. But the spirit essence is you have to have this mold spirit ability. And we're not going to have that for a while, so that's kind of uh, irrelevant for us at the moment. So I think we either want to do the acid attack, bonus hit points. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, yes, yes, let's yes. give it some kind of enchantment on his armor just for... Uh, just to have something, right? Yes. Bonus hit points. All right. Better than nothing. Oh, we have to have protection from energy. <laughs> oh no, I don't. I think that's one of the ones I don't have. Uh, let's see. Do I have it? I really wish it would tell you what level these spells are. Like, I don't even know. I'd have to look it up online or in the manual to see. So that's a no-go. Can't do that. I don't have Melf's Acid Arrow. She's, that's part of her opposition school. All this Melf's Acid Arrow and <clears throat> this Acid stuff. So she can't even cast those. So that's basically useless for me. Let's see. Air. Should do a Shock Weapon or Weight Reduction. Now that really would be useless. Cloak. I don't think these things are doing energy damage. Uh, so I just see very this little, on, <laughs> very little there to benefit me at the moment. Okay, so that's not going to be a big help. I might try the trap again. Let's see if we might have a little better luck with that. If I can do this right. Uh, let's see what happened to my modes there. They got turned away somehow. Let's see, key mapping. Uh, some way I, somehow I turned off the the modes. Toggle play mode. Mode bar G. Okay. <laughs> Bring that back. Alright, stealth mode activated. Let's see if we can get in here and Yeah, there they are. So maybe a trap would be smart as a start. Trap there. Okay, hopefully they don't see me before it's done. <laughs> Failure. Yeah, at least it didn't blow up in my face. Now I'm thinking maybe I can kind of lure them out into this hallway here and run them across this trap. Uh, he's not. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. So let's uh, think about another tack. Go ahead and have him quaff his potion. Come this way. And let's have her. What does premonition do? Damage reduction, thirty. But it's only useful on the caster. Let's see. Protection from spells. Spell mantle. She could summon the sword. I love this spell, but it's only one round of level, so we might want to wait until we're ready to go. Now that's a good one. Let's cast that on him. Oh, I can only do that on myself, too, huh? Uh, regular stone skin. Okay, cast that on him. Good. Uh, greater invisibility... Partially invisible and detectable by enemies, but treated as having concealment. So that would probably be a good one, but I think I might have X. Yeah, they're attacking. So here's another thing we could try to do is uh, instead of taking everything on. What is he stuck? You can try to get him out of here so you don't aggro the whole room. 
Let's see, I don't know what this guy's problem is. He's acting weird. Okay. So this will work. You know, it's that old thing from way back in Baldur's Gate. Go a little bit, aggro it, run out. Take it two or three at a time. I don't know, is that cheating or is that just good game like good tactics? I don't I don't know. There's probably a name for that strategy. No enough the only one ever thought of it. Oh, and we leveled up. Maybe we'll get something we can use. Even though I'd just be happy to have the, the hit points at this point, I swear. Alright, level up. So the question is, do I want to take another level of uh was it hell? You know, it doesn't even look like I can take another level of that. I guess that's a max, sort of max that out already. Shadow dancers. So I don't think I've had mobility yet, so I could maybe do a little bit of the shadow dancer later. So it looks like I'm back. I could pick anything I wanted, obviously. My intelligence is 16, so he might not be... You know, it might be nice to take like a... Uh, some kind of, kind of spell casting. Not even sure what some of these are. Favored soul. Could just do a straight up fighter. Rangers, rogue, sorcerer. Uh, the swashbuckler is what I was working on. My other character. He's already got... Doesn't really need weapon finesse. So that wouldn't be that big of a help. I think the, I want to say the only spellcaster that uses uh, intelligence, though, is my, is the wizard. I don't know what, I'm not real familiar with warlocks in this game, but I'm pretty sure they use something else, right? Charisma, maybe, for their spells. Should tell me they're somewhere. Somewhere it tells you. Uh, oh, they have to be evil anyway. Or I am chaotic, so I guess I could use that. Two plus int modifier for skills. Instead uses a repertoire. Eldritch Blast. Oh, come on. I can't believe I can't see what they use for their spells. I'd hate to pick this and... Maybe it is intelligence. I just don't remember. I don't see it listed there anywhere either. Warlock invokes powerful magic through will. Make up for their lack of versatility by being tougher. So what does that mean? They use wisdom? Or? I don't know. The spirit shaman. Nah. Let's just go rogue. Okay, we want to craft. So this is making traps, right? Oh, it tells you the ingredients here. That's cool. To create a trap, place the trap mold and all elemental components into the workbench's inventory, then use the smith hammer. Ah, that's a lot of trouble. Uh, so which one is... Uh, oh, set trap. So it's got its own. That's probably why that wasn't working. We didn't have any points in it. There we go. That should make that easier. Oh, that'd be great to get the sneak attack uh, bonus. The power critical. When you use the select, you get a plus four bonus on the roll to confirm a threat. So I think this one would actually be good to get. Assuming I had a Kukri. So that's, if you notice, it's slightly different than the improved critical. Uh, so if you look if you look at that improved critical it expands that basically does the same thing as keen weapon does well what else might be let's see what they recommend weapon focus short sword again that's weird two weapon defense and when wielding a double weapon or two weapons you gain a plus one shield bonus to your AC when using the parry action instead you get a plus two skill bonus added to your parry uh, you know, that's just a, that's all that does is give you plus one shield bonus. That's pretty crappy, I think. I already got 
should already have this, right? Make melee attack rolls with his dexterity modifier instead of strength. Automatic when using any of the following weapons. You know, I could I thought I already had that. Uh, maybe maybe I don't have this. Maybe that's why it's not doing so well. I'll go ahead and take that. You get greater two weapon fighting. Let's see, what does this do? Defeat grants a third attack with your offhand weapon with a negative 10 attack penalty. So third attack. You could scroll down here and look and see all this other stuff you can get. Uh, dash. 5% bonus to speed. Eh. Maybe the blind fight. I still don't know if this really would help or not. Character gets to roll, re-roll its mischance percentile one time to see if it hits. So these creatures aren't invisible. They have concealment. Hmm, I don't know if it would apply or not. This expert tactician, I heard some, read somewhere where this is a good one to get because you, uh, gives, let's see, what does it do? If you had a creature with an attack of opportunity, you and all your allies gain a plus two circumstance bonus. Uh, for some reason, that was suggested. That's probably about as good as any. You know, I'm not really familiar with playing a rogue, so... You know, feel free to chime in in the comments if you have suggestions. Okay, grab that. And, uh... Alright, so we got, what, two of them down? We got a new ability. New feet, that should help a little bit. Also helps if you go the right way. <laughs> Alright, I know there's what, still a bear in there. Where's, where's he go? Oh, there they go. Alright, let's run back out again. Come on. Get out of there. Alright, let's take it. That ought to be far enough. Yes, he's already getting attacks of opportunity. Wow, she's already using her meteor. So they must consider this to be a really tough battle if she's pulling out the heavy guns. You know, I think that feat is making a... One of those feats is making a big difference. I like the idea of getting that third attack. All right, so <laughs> go ahead and say that I see this trap. This chest is trapped. I'm gonna try to recover the trap. I think it'd be way too big of a pain to have to keep crafting traps. And I got it. That's cool. Strong holy trap kit. I like that idea of. Uh, not, am I, not am, if I just had the imp, you know, I could disable the trap, but this might actually let me recover the traps and use them against the enemies. That's pretty awesome. Here right, we got a longbow and another amulet. Yes. Amulet of unyielding will. Armor bonus versus Fey. Plus five. Is Fey? Is that what I'm fighting now? Fey monsters? Get a bunch of immunities, charm, charm person, dominate. I don't know how useful that's going to be. Uh, they started me off with this luck stone. It gives me universal saving throws, plus one, plus one on a lot of my most useful stuff. Wow, so is that worth the trade to get plus five armor bonus that may or may not even work on this stuff? I guess we'll try it out. You can always forget. You know, you can always try it out and switch back if you don't like it. <laughs> okay, let's go. You know what, I'm going to go ahead. This is a very dangerous place to rest. So they don't even want you to rest in here. I guess somebody at Obsidian decided the people were just abusing that rest too much on the OC. 
decided to nip that in the bud. You ain't even seen the worst of it yet. Oh, I'm controlling the wrong person. There's another one back there. She's not doing too bad. Just could not hit these guys. 50% concealment. A, that's a bad deal. Oh, get the badger. Tell Thor Badger. Oh, he's not dead yet. Tiefling ability. Darkness. Try to taunt him. Faint. I haven't had that work yet. Let me try it one more time. Hit it! It actually worked. <laughs> wow, so that should make him easier to hit. I don't know if that just lasts for one round. Alright, he's down anyway. Where's she going? I have a water essence. Oh, she's picking up the stuff automatically. Forgot to turn that on. Yes. So I guess I need to come back and yes. check that occasionally. Okay, go ahead and explore these little side rooms. He's definitely doing better since he got those new feats. You know, when you do import your character, you get to keep more items. You don't get to keep the Gith Yankee sword if that's what you've been using. You'll find out why later in the game. Tether Wolverine, come on. This thing. This incorporeal creature was once a wolverine in life. He died defending Rashomon and arose as a Telthor. You know, I didn't know much about these red wizards of Thay or, or what is it, uh, Rush Rushimi? It's pretty interesting places. I don't recall being here in other... I remember for the original Neverwinter Nights, if you ever visited there, I'm trying to remember. I'm not really, I wasn't really familiar with them. Oh, there's some new armor. Maybe that's better. Come this way. Oh, she's. This is above her ability to uh, her lore, but she gets a level, so maybe. Let's see where's lore. Pump that up all the way. Get one point. Oh, she gets a feat. And they recommend combat casting. Gets a plus four bonus to concentration when trying to cast spells in defensive combat mode. You know, that could be useful. I'm always kind of torn with these spell casters. Like, dodge, you know, that seems like it'd be good for them to be able to dodge. You won't need to. If you're not taking damage, you don't have to worry about concentration, right? <coughs> da -da 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 -da. She's already got. Persistent. Yeah, I'll just go with the recommend. Now here's where I could learn some of these spells that I need for my enchantment. So I think one of them was... What was it? Like protection? Not alignment. Uh, something energy, right? Protection from energy? Protection from arrows, no. Man, there's a lot of spells in this game. There's good old fireball. Yeah, there's the keen edge. Uh, this spell lasts for 10 minutes per level. Yeah, this would be a good one to put on, like a persistent, if that's an option. Increases its critical threat range. So maybe that would be... Oh, there's protection from energy. Let's go ahead and grab that. I don't know if I should get the uh, the keen edge or not. 
pretty sure I'm going to need it eventually. Let's go ahead and grab it. Okay, then we have to learn it, memorize it. So we can do that as the persistent spell. That's cool. Level 8. She gets a level 8 spell. Hmm. Go ahead and get Bear's Endurance, give my guy a little bit of help with his constitution. And let's see, what level was that protection from energy? Let's get rid of one of our, some of these. Keep that on, I guess. Get the, let's go ahead and get two of these while we're at it. Okay, we'll see if we can rest. Probably going to get interrupted, but we can try. Shroud of the Leopard. The power of a Teldor has been infused into this well-worn armor. Even just touching it gives you a mental picture of a great Rashimi snow leopard. Crouched and ready to spring. <laughs> so light armor, base armor class 2. Uh, really the special properties are what you want to look at. So you get an AC bonus of plus 5. And then we get some listen and spot bonuses. And it's got a built-in cast of a greater cat's grace greater cat's grace at level 11 three times a day that is yes pretty awesome for my <laughs> for, uh, for old Mattias. i think Mattias is going to be really happy about this armor and it, he can cast it himself three times a day and then when i rest it'll go back pretty yes. good pretty awesome okay now let's rest a very dangerous place. I don't like the sound of that, but we could try. And we're successful. Go ahead and save. <laughs> this way. Come on. Okay, Keep let's up. let us see what we can do. Maybe now we can finally enchant something. Yes. Probably won't be able to add anything to this armor since it's already got so much stuff. Uh, cloak of resistance. So we got a cloak you can enchant. Gloves. I don't know if you can enchant a belt or not. Maybe. I mean, these boots could be enchanted. And you can also enchant, put some extra enchantments on your rings. So there's a lot we can do here. Come this way. In terms of enchantments, let's just see what we might want to do. Uh, we could put an enhancement bonus on a weapon. It's already got one. If you do already have uh, the same type of enchantment, it's supposed to upgrade it if you have the uh, requisite levels and mats. It's the AC bonus on armor. You know, that might... Well, she's already got a plus three. Probably not going to get do any better than that. And let's see what else. Get Al's Wisdom or get a will save on a helmet. You see bonus on a cloak, gloves, all saves. So she casts a legend lore on the, her ring. She gets a bonus wizard spell slot each time. That's pretty cool. Uh, this can't use the spirit yet. Uh, let's see about the air. Shock weapon. Says. I really want those resistances. You know, this regeneration, I think, would be the best thing I could do. So let's see, he's the yes, one taking the most yes, damage. Yes. Let's go ahead and... Oh, he, he's got the armor, though. Probably... Yes. She's got one, two, three items. So I don't think I'd be able to cast that on anything, sad as that is. On a ring, save bonus versus cold attacks. Let's see, do I even know what they're... What are these guys? What kind of damage are they doing? I think just physical. It's not saying anything about what kind of what damage it is. I'm doing cold damage to them. So I don't know. I'm still tempted just to hold on to these items. Need to get some new armor or new weapon. Yeah. 
ever find my kukris, you know, then I definitely don't want to waste all my enchantment stuff. Then not have anything to use. Not be able to enchant them, you know. Alright, let's just explore a little bit more in here. Then you go see the bear. Oh, I forgot that I was going to try my trap out. Next time. Tell you one thing, I'm missing my cleave from my fighter. That what that happens is if you kill one thing, you just automatically gets free attack on the next mob. Very cool. Yeah, she'll run over there and pick it up too, I think, right? Yes, he's grabbing it. Yeah, I didn't even think about using that before. That was dumb. That really saves a lot of time. I don't have to keep picking everything up. It's just a habit at this point, but it's unnecessary. There's another yes. trap for my collection. Come here, trap. You know, I guess you could also... S What's she saying? I'm not doing anything until these traps are cleared. <laughs> well, good luck. We'll see. Ah, uh, triggered it. At least I don't have to worry about the imp. A lot of times the imp dies and you have to rest so you can cast it again. Let's see, a club, tether, telthor, leg bone. So it's got a plus four enhancement bonus and use ethereal jaunt. One use per day. I think that's kind of a way, way to get out of combat. And then a set of plus four hide armor. Eh. Not really impressed with those. Let's keep on going. Yes. Notice I've lost my haste spell. Yes. Cast my amp again. Get the. All right, let's go ahead and do the keen edge. See how that works. So I cast it on him. Yes. Yes. My magic yes. will erase this nuisance. I wonder yes, how that works. Yes. Does he get it on himself instead of the weapon? No, it's keen. So just the first item. So the first weapon is now keen. I wonder if that's reflected here. Attack bonus. Critical 17 to 20. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is the big battle coming up. Sophia, stop it! Leave me alone! Not here! <laughs> Not now! Mate Mateus, what are you doing? No, what's wrong? You alright? Who are you speaking to? Be silent, you'll draw more spirits. Now, who are you speaking to? It's nothing. Look, the tunnel's angling upward. We're nearing the exit. I passed through a chamber on my way in. There were bones. Bones of a great bear atop a carved stone. The Rishimi say a god dwells in this place, an angry bear god who rules the barrel. Okay, I think I can take that as a warning. Big battle coming up. We'll try the stealth again. <laughs> and there he is. What stirs the air and smells so foul? Go back and die in the silence and the dark. I am tired and ill of temper. Alright, so we got this colorful bear. Could try to be diplomatic. Just say I've got an argument with him. Just say, who is he? Who are you? I am Oku, king of bears. In life, I ruled the world above. Fish and fowl, bird and beast. In death, I guard this realm below, and I sleep, and I dream of wind, and moon, and sky. I know what you are, little one. I smell the hunger that wakes in you. I don't care what you smell. You will not have him. What do you care, Thayan? I know your kind. 
You love your own lives above all else. You don't know me, but I know your kind. I know that your present form, for all its color, is only a shadow of your true self. And I've shaped and bound far greater things than you. And I smell a wild storm in you, Thayen. Does your ally know the secrets you hide? Grief and confusion beyond measure, and something more. Enough words. By the oath I swore, neither of you will leave my den. All right, I think we're ready to fight. Okay, let's just go in and see what Stand happens. Stand still so I can hit you. Huh. Ooh, I got sneak attacks on him. Wow. Let's see what that did. 41 damage. So when it works, it works great. Looks like he summoned some buddies. Okay, now might be a good time to see what else I can cast over here. Yeah. I have a lot of luck with this meteor storm. Go ahead and get that cast up. Yeah, we know we've try this greater cat's grace on ourselves. Probably should have done that before the fight. Alright, so that should have given him a little dex boost. Wow, he's all about to 30 now. Stand still so I can hit you! Oh, I'm not doing any damage to him. There we go. Looks like he's got some kind of little Enchantment or something. Ah, oh, taking too much damage here. I don't think I've got any heals left. My magic will erase this nuisance. Nope. Well, let's see what else she can cast. Polar Ray. Range touch attack with a ray to deal damage. I still feel better about a fireball. Make sure we're casting it. In a good spot, though. Where is that casting? Not there. Still haven't quite figured out how the targeting works. Alright, that took care of most of that. Got a bit more boar. A bear left. He's still there. <laughs> Ay, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see which one's the closest to death. Let's try that. Oh, I really wish I had a, another heal. Okay, is everything dead? My magic will erase this nuisance. I still got this Wolverine back here. It's going down. Come on. <laughs> oh, don't hit me. She's almost dead. No, kill it! It's your death! Oh, there we go. Woo! Finish off this damn water elemental. Man, now that is about as close as you're gonna get. <laughs> two, two health points. Wow. All right, we did it though. Yes. She scooped up the treasure. Oh, it tells me what you got there. Forgot. Go ahead and make this a little bigger here. Or not. <laughs> there we go. Let's see what she's picking up there. Yes, yes, yes. Save. <laughs> oh, where'd our bear, bear friend go? What is going on here? Look at these statues. Or totems, I guess. Ancient wooden chest. <laughs> it is a great axe. <laughs> Everything I but guess. a kukri. Axe of the Bear King. That's already got keen. That's got keen as a property. It's a great axe, though. Not really my, my style. And she's already got too much weight on her. Once you pack them too heavy, they get yes, to moving yes. really slow. Okay, so let's just go a little bit further here. 
Be out of this cave. Yeah, now we're now we can go to the gates of uh, Molson Tier. Uh, but that's really basically the prologue at that point, or the introduction, as I would call it. So it's just ahead of us stand the gates of Molson Tier. You've been eviscerated, paralyzed, assaulted by spirits, and subjected to countless leagues of walking. How are you feeling? So in a, in a lesser game, you know, we'd have done that preliminary stuff and then got to the the main game, right? It would would have had very little to do uh, with the rest of the game. Uh, but here, every bit of that little intro segment sets up uh, the, the stuff that's going to happen later. Uh, not just introducing the characters, but uh, the themes, uh, some of the bigger plot arcs. I mean, it's it's really just well done. I have to agree with our, our blogger friend. I've brought you here to speak with Liana. She'll hopefully know what happened to you in the Barrow, and why. I need to know what really happened back in the Barrow. Liana is an associate of my mother, or so I've gathered. I've never met her or even heard of her until I was tasked to bring you to her. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think there's a single character in this game uh, that you can take at face value. <laughs> uh, they're, they're all hiding things. This, this theme of the masks and, and betrayal, you know, it runs all throughout the game. These robes display my rank and affiliation as a red wizard, and the locals care very little for my people. As long as we're in Molsentir, I shouldn't display my red robes. Give me a moment to adjust my attire. Like even a little thing like that. So she, a horse and wagon. she doesn't want to be uh, confused. She doesn't want people to see that she's this red wizard of Thay. As he's wearing a disguise, and I mean that's the, you know, just thinking about it symbolically, as a work of a, as a piece of literature, you know, it's, you know, it's a theme, right? The you can't show your face, your true face to the world. Yes. You have to always be in disguise. There's <laughs> things going on uh, that are even hidden from the person, uh, him or herself. Uh, so there's just you know just looking at it kind of as a mature work of uh, literature, good writing. You know, it's definitely got it. No question. Way more sophisticated than just about any other. You know, it'd be on a very short list, you know, when it comes to, to narratives and RPGs. But I think we played enough of this intro bit. You know, I, again, I think, you know, I've already gone over the first game, so a lot of the same stuff will be here. So just go back and watch that review if you want more detail. Uh, but I did want to take a quick look and see what the some of the later stages will look like. Let me find a good one here for you. Maybe not something that's going to... Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot. I even forgot to mention all these great puzzles. When you get to the Academy... Let's see if i got a save there. Oh, this is uh, way, way back. Uh, eventually you get to the Academy. Yeah, here we go. And it's a, a really great puzzle here with... Uh, these mirrors, it's like if you ever play that old laser board game. I can't think of the name of that. Uh, but basically, you got to get from point A to point B with these lasers, line them all up. Sophia, thank the heavens I spotted you first. You might have been killed. Master Jaffe, I was worried that you might have... I mean, I was told that my mother... I'm afraid so, my dear. I'm so sorry. If there was anything I so could have done, so some of this might be getting into spoiler territory. I'm not sure so I'm going to skip through this yes. real quick. And giving so I really just want to show you these lasers. <laughs> yeah, so I could show you somewhere here. There's got to be one. Yeah, this is the academy where she comes from. Maybe there's a different floor where the lasers are. Oh, you know what? I'm getting that same glitch I had before. Yeah, so I guess it's a good thing I showed you this. So if you are, if you think all the glitches are solved, sadly, no. Like this, you notice how this is just black here. I can't get in here. And this, uh, you know, this one really bugged me because I couldn't figure out what to do next. I felt like I was stuck. I ended up having to get on a walkthrough, figure out what I had missed. And it was just, this area is not lining up. You know, that's supposed to, it's just a room. 
should be able to see what's in there, but it's just it's not working as you can see. Uh, so I actually ran into that bug a few times. You know, not enough times to make me want to quit. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was, just keep it in mind. If you get into a dungeon or something, you're like, what am I supposed to do? I'm completely stuck. Can't figure out what to do. There's no hints in the journal. Seems like there should be something behind this open door. Uh, it's probably just the glitch. And if you, What I found is if I reloaded the game, I went out of the zone, came back in, it would be fine. Uh, so you might try that. But here's at the very... Uh, so what happened here? I got all the way through the game. Uh, got an ending, and I thought it was a pretty good ending. I like it. It's very... It's kind of dark in a way, uh, the ending I got to. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, obviously. But I kind of felt like, you know, I'm a little surprised they would let it end. And it's a very sort of dark ending uh, for my character. So I just wondered what some of the other endings were. And I found out there was a whole area called the Wells of LaRue that I just kind of skipped over. I didn't, you know, I wasn't really aware of what order you're supposed to do these in. So I actually completed the game without ever coming here. And so what I did, I went back to an earlier save and came back. And uh, what I found is there's a piece of this mask fragment. I want to get into what these are. But to get the good ending, or, you know, your What's in my opinion a good ending, you need to get three pieces of the mask. And one of the pieces is here in the wells of uh, LaRue. So I really like that. There's a lot of stuff you can find. You know, still let me beat the game. I was actually satisfied with the ending, uh, as it was. But, you know, I was curious enough about what happens if you get all the mask fragments. I, I came back here. Now, as you can see, this is uh, these characters are... He's got a lot of weapon master, fighter. Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure the max you ever get in this game is four characters. Yes. You do run into some of the... Uh, yes. Well, never mind. I'm not, I'm not even going to spoil that for you. Yes. But uh, you can see how most of these have been... She's like level 24. Sure, yes. I was going to mention these... Uh, these epic feats. So once you hit level 30, and I'm pretty sh What's his level? It's like he's level 30. I forget what level it is, but at some point you start getting these epic feats. And these are all... I really enjoyed these. Like you can continue pumping up your strength. Or overwhelming criticals. <laughs> epic weapon epic uh, weapon specialization. Uh, so this is pretty cool. So this is... A, you know, I like how they keep adding things. So, you know, there's always something to look forward to. And you also notice here, since, since he's... Uh, since he's a character I imported from the OC, I get all these history feats that came with him from the, the previous game. And you know, Again, some of these people that are saying it has nothing to do with the previous game, I don't know what they're smoking. I mean, you wouldn't even know anything about this Silver Sword of Gith. Uh, and they do reference uh, some of these, and then uh, some of the dialogue options. And then, uh, of course, you know some of the characters, you wouldn't know anything. It'd be totally insignificant to you uh, when you run into the characters from the previous game, which you do in this expansion if you had never played it you wouldn't even know who they who they were so uh, just ignore those people that say you shouldn't play the uh, the OC uh, I definitely think you should just gonna see if I can get into a combat real quick so you can see what this looks like I feel like they kind of want to it's kind of hard to skip some of these dialogues I'll try to move on just get into combat Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Here's a pretty good fight. Uh, so this is my weapon master. And he's got all this... Uh... Oh, here it is. Yeah, this is the big thing I, I should tell you about. Is the spirit meter. Uh, so this will take a little bit of explaining. I'm not going to go into the story part of it, because I think you should discover that on your own. But basically what happens here, we got this meter that starts ticking. It's always ticking. It ticks faster if I devour spirits. Maybe I should... <laughs> How to <I> describe this? <laughs> Alright, so first of all, it's just this meter that is always ticking down. If you, uh, depending on how you try to deal with the spirit meter going down, it'll either do it faster or slower. So that's this bar at the bottom here is showing me basically how good of a person I've been. If you, uh, when you get your spirit meter gets too low, you start to take these penalties. Like the stage one, you get negative one to all abilities, 5% vulnerability to damage, all the way down to death. 
So you always have to keep an eye on this, make sure it doesn't get too low. You probably don't want it to get down in here and start taking all these penalties and then of course you don't want to die. Now, as far as like, how do you build it back up again? Uh, there's several ways you can do that. Uh, one is suppress, which you just use once per day. Uh, that's kind of the goody two shoes way of restoring this, I suppose. It doesn't really do too much. I wasn't able to really use this very successfully. It says if you're around spirits, it gives you uh, more bonus to the spirit energy, but just for me, it was not enough. Uh, your other option is to devour spirits. So if you're fighting something, a, a fey or an elemental, and you get them down low enough, you could try this. You know, it says if the target is near death, uh, the attack kills it. And then you get the spirit energy bar replenished by the amount equal to the uh, HP remaining on the target. <laughs> Too complicated. Uh, but basically, it's kind of the evil way to replenish your spirit. And the more you use that, the devour, this craving bar will start to fill up. And the closer it gets to full, uh, the quicker the spirit will go down. So it's like a, people have likened this to an addiction. Like being a raging alcoholic or a crackhead or something. Like the more you take to try to deal with it, uh, the quicker you're going to need another hit. So the other option then is to just stick to eternal rest. So if you're fighting undead, it works kind of like Devour Spirit, but it doesn't uh, does not increase or reduce craving. So there's spots in the game you can go back to where there's a lot of undead and use this. It does have a five minute cooldown, so that you know you could just sit for five minutes and wait for that to tick back up or tick down. Uh, there's a satiate. I never used this. I guess it's, if, you're, if it's an emergency, you can use this. And it takes your XP away uh, to raise it. So obviously you don't want to use that too much. And then there was another one that I never got called... Uh, uh, what was it? Devour Soul, I think? I guess that might only be for evil characters. But I guess that might work on anybody. I never got that. Uh, there's a Bestow Life Force. Never used this either. I guess you could trade your, convert some of your spirit into companions. And so that might be a way to deal with your craving getting too high. Uh, yeah, that just explains that bit. I thought there was one other one. Oh, there's a mold spirit that you need to do some of the enchanting uh, with the bag and the pouch. Uh, for some reason, I was never able to find that. It has something to do with the golem uh, earlier in the game. I just never never really messed with them so I didn't get this ability but that's just more of a crafting side of it uh, so that's basically the spirit mechanic spirit eater mechanic here uh, you know it seems like you're probably going to end up having to use it sometimes I had to devour some spirits just to survive a few times in the game especially until I figured out how to do the uh, devours or the eternal rest you know so some people didn't like that it does impact your rest so uh, when I try to rest, that's when you really lose a big chunk of this. You know, you rest a couple times trying to get all your spells back, trying to do some crafting. Next thing you know, you're down into like the <laughs> like 10, 5 spirits in emergency. And then what do you want to do? Lose XP? Uh, you're probably going to go somewhere where there's some spirits and you can provoke them and devour them. Uh, and then you got this craving. It's just kind of like one of these. I almost saw it more as this kind of a, a nag mechanic. It's, it's just kind of felt more like a an itch. You kept getting this itchy, scratching it. <laughs> scratching it just makes it worse. You know, I don't know what it... To me, it didn't really add a lot of uh, to the game. It just kind of felt like one more thing to have to worry about. Kind of made you always feel like there's this... Uh, no matter how good you're doing in the game, you have to keep coming looking at this and making sure it's high enough and worrying about it. It just it seemed like it did more to just worry me and nag at me uh, than it made the game more fun to play. Uh, some people say it really wasn't implemented into the game, uh, the story very well. I actually disagree with that. You know, it all makes perfect sense. You know, this idea of having this, uh, you know, th this hunger inside you. The, uh, you know, when you, it's kind of hard to talk about without spoiling stuff for you. But to me, it does make sense in the context of the story. Um, at first, it was extremely annoying because it was my craving was way up and this thing was just going down too fast and I was having to basically uh, cheese the mechanics a little bit to keep from dying keep having to go back to running back and forth between a couple of waypoints map points to <laughs> go back use suppress again and again 
Uh, but eventually, once you get the undead devourer thing, it's easy enough to deal with. And if you have to devour a few spirits, it's not that big of a deal. And then finally, the as long as you know to keep your craving level down, if you can keep and there's certain quests that once you get done with a quest, it'll raise your spirit all the way back up again. So it didn't. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, but yeah, as soon as you see this and you figure out what's going on, it's, it might start to bother you. You know, you kind of just with this, like the first Neverwinter Nights game. I'm sorry. With I mean, with the official campaign, I felt a lot more relaxed. I actually kind of liked being able just to rest whenever I wanted to, basically. Uh, get my spells back, uh, not have a irritant like this to deal with to prevent that. Now it would be, and some people did say, if you're playing a wizard, again, somebody that has to keep resting to re get your spells back, this becomes a real pain in the butt. Because, uh, you you know, think about it. You, you basically have to spend most of the game without using any of your spells. Otherwise, you'll use them all up, and then uh, you have to keep finding a way to replenish this, this spirit. So I don't know. I didn't play a spellcaster class. It might have been a lot more annoying had that been the case, uh, but I found it okay as a fighter. I'm pretty sure my rogue that I was playing a while ago would be all right as well. See, this guy just really chews up the, chews everything up. That's great damage. I really liked having this fighter weapon master guy. You know, I still have to click on the enemy sometimes. Look at all this. I love looking at these numbers up here. He, sometimes you'll hit them for like 150 points of damage. There's your volatile stuff. So, I mean, there you go. I think that's probably probably sufficient. If you want to, if you're trying to decide, should I play this? Uh, so my consensus on it is, I really, really enjoyed this. I, I think, as you probably know, I'm not a huge guy when it comes to game narrative. I usually say, if I if I want a narrative, I'll read a book. I'll watch a movie. You know, those those media are designed for that. Uh, a lot of times, and when people are saying a narrative is great, uh, what does that mean? Um, it's just something they find easy to write about. It, most of the time, it just ends up you're doing a lot of reading, you're reading a lot of text, you're listening to a lot of dialogues, you're watching a lot of cutscenes. That really, when you really think about it, have very little to do with what you're actually doing as you're playing the game. So that's why I bristle a little bit. I, I, I'm a little hesitant, a little skeptical, uh, where anybody starts talking about a game and the first thing they say is, oh, the narrative was so great. It makes me a little skeptical, but I didn't really, I think that's not true of this game. Uh, this actually works well. Uh, I didn't feel like I was just reading a bunch of boring uh, flavor text that had nothing to do with the, the, you know, what's going on in the game. It's quite the opposite. I actually get interested and it felt like what I was doing was making me more interested in, in uh, learning more about the game world, these areas, these characters, what's going on. This, you know, I like the sort of, uh, you know, doll within a doll within a doll uh, storyline we've got here. That's that's really not a bad analogy to use uh, for the story. Uh, thematically, it just feels a lot more mature. You know, if you read a really good uh, author, good writer, you know, they, they don't just throw in details and descriptions uh, just willy-nilly. You know, there's always some thought behind it. Uh, making sure everything fits together is it's coherent uh, so they just really nailed that and again i a lot of the games that people say that they love for the narrative to me i don't because i feel like it's just too much reading uh, this was not the case you know even these journal descriptions you know these aren't huge it's not like you're always finding these big books and it's got like 17 pages to read <laughs> you know nothing like that this felt a lot better and i liked also that it wasn't so complicated and just so uh, overwhelming with characters and story arcs and you know subplots and all this where you just feel like what the hell is going on you pretty much have to have a cliff's notes standing by to try to <laughs> figure out what's going on <laughs> uh you know this i think maybe having the shorter length uh really helped with that uh, you don't you know you don't tend to forget like who's that character i haven't seen this character in a long time don't even know who it is i had to can't remember back that far you know, nothing like that here. Uh, so I think you could, you know, if you're looking for a good game to study, if that is your thing, if you, if you want to craft a good narrative uh, for a CRPG, I think this would be a great place to study. You know, really study how they put all this together. Uh, otherwise, you know, the the gameplay mechanics is pretty much the same as you saw in the OC. You know, obviously they tacked on, they've changed. Probably the biggest changes I noticed 
they really changed up the uh, uh, the crafting system. Yes. Now it's all based around these essences. You just look up the essence. You see what spell you cast. You see what you want to cast it on. Makes a lot of sense. It's easy to use. I use this a lot more than I did the enchantments. You now I swear to God, on that OC, I felt like I spent about half my time in that damn tavern studying this crafting system, trying to figure out how it works, getting these uh, mats together, figuring out the spell. I mean, just figuring out who needs to have the right feet to use the, you know, to make the items. I mean, they, they really just improved that a hundredfold here. Uh, so that's a big plus, I think. Uh, another thing that I liked about this were the, uh, I mean, you know, I, I did like the characters a lot. Um, what was I thinking, though? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the epic feats. I think that's pretty cool. You know, by the end of this, you really feel like you've attained, like, godlike power. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice, especially if you played all the way from level one, all the way up to when you've got all these epic feats that you're you're dealing with. That's that's really cool. Uh, otherwise, I'm trying to think if I left any, anything out. Uh, some of the music, I thought was uh, fantastic. Let me see if I can get a quick look at who did the uh, the music for this. Because I want to give them a, a, sh a special uh, mention because it was really good. Let's see, music by Alexander Brandon and Rick Schaefer. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple of spots in the game. You get to a new zone, and you got this special music playing. And I especially like some of the tanger. They got some sort of Tangerine Dream. It's one of my favorite bands. All those guys, and some of the tracks for this game really reminded me of that. It's very ethereal music, and it's not that sort of bland background crap, generic <laughs> uh, orchestra music. This is one of the things, especially when you get to the, uh, oh, what's the name of that? Uh, I forget the name, like the Eternal City or something, start towards the end of the game. And man, this music that's playing is just so good. You kind of want to see if you could find the uh, the soundtrack and just play it you know, as you're working on your computer. It's really just really good stuff. Um, so musically, it's great. I guess about the, you know, graphics, I don't really see the, any really big changes. I was a little bit yes. bothered by these portraits over here. You know, that's probably the only part that I felt looked a little bit, you know, unpolished. I mean, this just looks like kind of a quick sketch. <laughs> Somebody just, you know, banged together in 10, 15 minutes, boom. It looks like something you'd see on a some type of iPhone game or like a real casual game. It doesn't have that. I mean, you just look at the look of my character compared to some of these. It has a little bit weird. You can see it more even if you zoom in here. But just you know, ordinarily, who gives a damn? But the fact that it's kind of on your screen the whole game, <laughs> you know, that's a little bit more serious. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I don't know what else really to say about it, um, other than you should definitely play it. I would recommend that you get go to GOG, get the uh, the full package, play through the uh, play through the official campaign. I uh, did pick this up. I think you have a really great time. And I think your appreciation for Neverwinter Nights 2 will go way up uh, after you've played this expansion. Uh, first time I played this, I, you know, I played the OC way back in the day. And, you know, it was okay. It didn't really do that much for me back then. So I didn't bother with the uh, expansion. But going back, playing through uh, Mask of the Betrayer has really kind of upped my respect for this uh, only by about a hundred <laughs> factor of a hundred so <laughs> anyway just take my word for it grab it uh check it out play it let me know what you think it's definitely one of those games that you're not going to want to stop halfway through because you're bored uh, you're probably going to be like me get really invested in the character's story what's going on <laughs> you know you're genuinely curious about the plot uh, so i think you're really going to have a good time with it uh, anyway that'll do it uh for mask of the betrayer hope you enjoyed this and see you next time and that's all for this week's episode hope you guys enjoyed that uh should be back probably in a couple weeks got some live streams planned got some more uh, uh interviews lined up and of course more games like neverwinter nights 2 uh that we want to cover uh probably freedom force next uh as always i want to thank you thank you thank you very 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 much for your yes you right there, uh, supporting this show, keeping Matt Chet on the air after all these years. Absolutely could not do it, would not do it without you. You're very important to me. 
And I really, really, truly appreciate, very grateful to you for your support of this show. Uh, you know, I can't say that enough times, how thankful I am. Uh, if you would like to support the show, haven't already, uh, remember, whatever amount you want to contribute, a buck, two bucks, you know, there's no amount uh, too small. It all really helps. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. So if you'd like to join those ranks of this esteemed, uh, established, rather excellent rats, uh, just go to that link in the show notes to Patreon. Uh, look for me, uh, or just look, click on the links the easiest way you can get signed up. It takes a few minutes, and I think you'll really get more out of the show uh, after you do that. So. Uh, thank you. Really do appreciate that. Okay, what do we got here from that? New oh, I uh, forgot to mention. <laughs> uh, if you want to get Neverwinter Nights 2, I know I mentioned this in the last video. I guess that's why it slipped my mind. Uh, but if you go to Good Old Games, that's uh, GOG.com, uh, for $19.99, basically 20 bucks, you can get the Neverwinter Nights 2 complete package. And that has, the, of course, the official campaign. Uh, it's also got Mask of the Betrayer, and also uh, uh, a third expansion. I can never remember the name of it. It's like Storm of Zehir. <laughs> Zehir. <laughs> uh, haven't played that one myself, but you know, heck, it'd be worth it. It'd be worth twenty bucks just to get Mask of the Betrayer. Uh, so you can pick that all up on Neverwinter Night on a uh, GOG. I just look for Neverwinter Nights to complete. And then don't forget that there's two mods I recommend. There's actually a bunch of other mods you might want to get try out. Uh, to do everything from change uh, the look of the game to the AI, much more. Uh, but the two I found essential, uh, Neverwinter Nights 2 client extension, uh, that gets rid of a lot of the problems with the newer machines, newer version of Windows. If, you get, if you're trying to play this and the animation looks wonky and you can't get a good resolution, uh, try that. Uh, there's also the TCHOS, T-C-H-O-S HD widescreen menu and loading screen mod. And if you're having trouble making out the fonts, you know, if the windows are too small, <laughs> if you're kind of having to get really up, up on your monitor to see stuff, uh, get that mod. Uh, those are the only two I installed. Had a good time. You know, there's still some bugs and glitches here and there, but I think that will uh, really help. Um, it makes it a lot more enjoyable to play, uh, put it that way. All right, so now, uh, what about that news from the Matt Cave? All right, a lot of news here. Uh, first up, if you remember the fat man, I don't know how you could ever forget him. This is George Sanger. He's one of the real pioneers of game audio. Not just It's not just that he's a great musician, which he is, uh, but he's also a lot of, uh, you know, what to call this guy. He's kind of been out, kind of pioneering, promoting uh, game audio. He's, he's really instrumental, I think, in moving DOS, uh, the DOS games in particular, from that sort of bleep, you know, internal speaker days, <laughs> uh, to getting standard set so we could have sound blasters and all that good stuff. Basically, the, you know, the great game audio we have today, uh, you really chase a lot of that back to him, uh, the fat man. Plus, he's been innovative in lots of other ways. So if you have any interest at all, and I mean any interest in game audio <laughs> or just digital music, uh, you definitely want to check this out. Uh, I should tell you what I'm talking about. Fragments of Silicon Interview. Uh, so I'll put a link in the show notes. That's our friend Adam Dayton, uh, who we've had on the show before. He likes to show up for the live streams. Uh, but he's got his own, or him and his friends do this Fragments of Silicon podcast. They've got a lot of other good shows too, but I always like to point out the ones uh, uh, with the Fat Man. So go check that out. He also talks in there a lot about music for kids, and like how to make good music and games for kids. So if that's something you're interested in too, go check it out. Uh, and then this is, uh, this is from Charlie Hall of Polygon.com. Uh, Thursday is the global launch date for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So you're probably familiar with the Pathfinder. I never really even heard of it until I played Pathfinder Kingmaker, but of course <laughs> it's a tabletop system. And I'm not going to get in again to like what's the relationship between this and Dungeons and & Dragons. It's frankly just too compli <laughs> complicated for me, uh, legally speaking and all. But uh, basically there's a new version of Pathfinder up. And it's getting some attention because it's... Uh, uh, they tried to refine, quote-unquote, the tactical combat, uh, which is kind of known for. It's kind of known for being more complex uh, than 5th edition D&D, but apparently they have tried to simplify it. 
uh, or refine it, I should say. At least that's how uh, Mr. Hall puts it. So what does that mean? So they refine the rules for what a player can do on their turn. Pathfinder characters now only perform three actions. These can include drawing your sword, casting a spell, etc. Everything you do in combat has a cost in actions, and every cost for every action is clearly explained. As a result, Pathfinder feels unified and complete rather than a, quote, hodgepodge of errata and exceptions that have accumulated for this previous, <laughs> in the previous iteration. So there you go. Uh, you know, not a, I haven't really played Pathfinder either, either of the tabletop games, uh, but I'd really like to hear from you if you're a fan. You know, let me know what you think. Is, is second edition, is it, is it really this big leap forward? Uh, did they do a good job? refining or have they just dumbed it down <laughs> you always love those discussions so let me know what you think uh, maybe you haven't got a chance to check it out yet but let me know when you do and then finally i thought this was kind of funny uh, alessio palumbo uh, wrote about i didn't write down his website uh, but anyway <laughs> i'll put a link to it in the show notes uh, he's writing about how blizzard was blown away by how many people played wow classic beta so as you probably know that, uh, you know, the World of Warcraft, uh, I don't even know how many expansions they've got out. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I've been playing a little bit of the latest patch. But there's a lot of talk about this classic vanilla, wow, vanilla, sort of rolling back uh, to a very early version. Uh, you know, letting people see what that game was like back then. Or people that are nostalgic for the good old days. Or maybe people that didn't like anything after. <laughs> uh, so they put this beta up. And apparently it's just been going insane. And so he's got some quotes here from uh, lead software engineer Brian Birmingham. He's got, he, uh, the quote is, One thing I noticed was just how passionate people were about the beta. Our expectation for betas is generally we'll get a lot of people come in, try things for a little bit, and then they'll say, okay, I'm going to wait until release. I've helped you guys, and now I'm finished. But that's not happening here. These people are sticking around. Uh, he says they're blown away by just how people who wanted to play night after night, even though they know these characters are going to get wiped before we release. Really just blows us away how dedicated people are. So this to me is just really interesting. Like what's going on here? <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of beyond like why would, I'm kind of like him, I don't know why people knowing, you know, if you knew your character was going to be deleted, why would you be spending all this time grinding and you know, and why play this old vanilla version when the new version is out? <laughs> I can think of a few reasons, but uh, anyway, it's really curious. Uh, so basically what, the, what they're going to do in response to this, is instead of just having uh, four content rollouts, they're going to drag this out into six phases instead. So, you know, wow. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, what's going on? Uh, I haven't tried the vanilla server. I actually came into World of Warcraft around the... Uh, uh, the Burning Crusade era is when I first started to play. Um, you know, I'm not the most religious player. You're not one of these guys that's displayed, <laughs> plays obsessively. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, you know, even I've heard about this vanilla, and you can see a lot of discussions going on on the, uh, <clears throat> you know, amongst player fans, and, you know, people are either curious about it. Uh, but I didn't know it was that big of a thing. So, you know, let me know what you think. If you played vanilla, back in the day, or if you're going back to beta test this new thing, I'd love to hear uh, your views. Or if you plan to try vanilla, or why you might not want to, anything like that, sound off in the show notes. Be glad to hear it. All right, let's wrap it up with a quote then. And I was looking for quotes about narratives, and I found one from somebody who might be a relative of mine. I don't know, I'd like to think so. Uh, Fiona Barton. She is an English journalist. Uh, anyway, I, I love her uh, thought here. I think you will too. It goes something like this. The unsaid is a powerful tool. It invites the reader into the narrative, filling in gaps, interpreting silences in half-finished sentences, and seeing the hidden fear in someone's eye. So, ponder on that, and see you guys next time. Attack ships on fire.
Time to die. 